The UN agency UNRWA is responsible for assisting more than two-thirds of Gaza's population. Many Gaza people fled their homes for the organization's schools during the airstrikes. Roy Rottenberg sat down with the organization's chief, who told him the international community needs to continue to support the people of Gaza. Your boss, the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, uh, visited the region and was criticized by some in Palestinian circles for not going to Gaza, going to Ramallah, speaking with the Palestinian leadership here, but not going to Gaza like uh, the Secretary General of the Arab League, League did. Why is that? The world leaders divide their labor in a way in situations like this uh, in order to maximize the impact that they can have. Uh, I really think that the Secretary General is extremely committed to the welfare of the people in Gaza. He has gone several times. He's the only Secretary General who's gone several times. I've gone with him several times myself, accompanying him to Gaza. And every time I see him, wherever he is in the world, he always asks me about Gaza. So I think it is unfair to this Secretary General in particular to criticize him for not having had the opportunity, and I'm sure that he will go as soon as he can. What is the UN doing to address the concerns of both sides, Israel and Hamas? Uh, I can only echo what the Secretary General has said many, many times, that uh, rockets launched from Gaza on uh, uh, civilian communities in southern Israel and uh, now beyond are against uh, international law and must stop. And the disproportionate use of force, uh, the Secretary General was very clear during his visit, the disproportionate use of force on the part of the Israeli Defense Forces um, is also to be avoided. But, but those are words. Is the UN prepared to actually take action? I mean, it can't put boots on the ground, perhaps, in this situation. Is it prepared to put sanctions against Israel? Is it uh, prepared uh, to create some type of buffer zone, an internationally mo monitored buffer, buffer zone on the Gaza-Egypt border? What action is it prepared to do to address these issues? You are asking a question that really should be directed, yes, to the United Nations, but as its member states. They are the ones who have to decide what guarantees have to be provided or can be provided to the parties in order to make any ceasefire or truce a lasting one. Let me, however, take the opportunity to tell you that we're fully committed to do whatever it takes to support the population in the refugee population in Gaza uh, even more effectively if there is a lasting ceasefire with guarantees for this to last. So this, is what, this is what I think I must say. For the rest, it's a political decision, and I hope that guarantees will be provided. This I can certainly say. And so the member states need to take that action. The member states also, uh, to deal with your humanitarian uh, uh, mission, uh, need to pay for what you're doing. Are they stepping up to the plate? It's interesting because, as always, when there is a flare-up of the situation, when there is a crisis, resources come. The important thing is that that assistance continues when crises go outside of the media and of the, of the headlines. Uh, since last year, we've really stepped up our efforts to generate interest and support also from other countries, especially emerging economies. We've scored some significant successes with some, with Brazil, for example, with Turkey. And I'm really appealing also to other countries, including China, to become a stakeholder in uh, supporting UNRWA, which is a, f a, very, a very important actor, a very important player from the human side in a situation which is of strategic interest to the whole world. Filippo Grandi, Commissioner General for UNRWA, thank you for joining us. Thank you.